Good morning, everybody. It's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. It's July 8th, and I am going to be talking about the books a little bit. We're in Revelation, and I've been talking about the judgment. And the judgments have been severe, and we haven't even gotten into more detail what's, what's going to happen during this judgment time. We had the seals. And then the seventh seal announced the trumpets. Then we have the trumpets. It just gets more severe. And the judgments. Uh, and then the trumpets, the seven trumpets, will announce the uh, bowls. We're going to take a break here, though, in the middle of this. And we're going to talk about the mighty angel with the little book. So God's books. If you remember, I'll just read the last part here of... Revelation 9 20 but the rest of mankind who are not killed by these plagues their hands and they should not worship demons and idols of gold and brass stone and wood which can neither see nor hear or walk and they did not repent but they didn't they didn't uh, repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons I missed that and idols of gold silver brass wood and stone which can neither see nor hear nor walk, and they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or sexual moralities or thefts. So all the, the reason why I wrote that, read that was all this has taken place and still people won't repent. And we can see that God is taking this judgment, increasing the judgment level, if you will, and I really find that as a still a loving a loving act you know um, the punishments are increasing in hopes that mankind would repent well the little mighty the mighty angel with the little book is what this is titled in Revelation 10 I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was on his head and though no, that's not for you the people that live in a homosexual life that's not. The rainbow is a symbol of God's, uh, not only is it his judgment, but it's also his promise that he wouldn't flood the earth anymore. That's what he told us. And like the sun. And the rainbow was on his head, his face was like the sun, and his feet was like pillars of fire. And the reason why I mentioned that, I'm sorry, but I just, somehow, the LGBTQ community has a trademark on the rainbow. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's God's. It's all for all mankind. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know where you, where that has come from. All right. He had a little book open in his hand and he had set his right foot from the sea and his left foot on the land and cried with a loud voice. And when the lion roars, as when it, a lion roars, when he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices now when the seven thunders uttered their voices i was about to write but i heard a voice saying in heaven to me seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them the angel whom i saw standing on the sea of the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are on in it the things and the things that are in it on it in it and the sea and the things that are in it and there should be no delay no longer but in the days of sounding of the seven angels, when he is about to sound, the mysteries of God would be finished, as he declared to his servant, the prophets. Now John eats a little book. Then a voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands in the sea of the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said, Take and eat, and I will make your stomach bitter. It will make your stomach bitter, but it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took in the little book and out of the angel's hand and I ate it and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But I had, when I had eaten, eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said, you must prophesy again about the many people's nations, tongues, and kings. Just like Christians ought to. <laughs> because the book, the word of God, the prophecies that are contained in this book and, and the judgment to come, although... It tastes good at first. The reason it becomes bitter 
is because we are seeing men and women who will not repent. So their eternal fate is the lake of fire. So that's where the bitterness comes. No, nope. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. Now, or does, nor does the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact is that he died for you and I. So he's made a way. There's a way of escaping judgment. And I want to talk about the books that are at hand in judgment. You know, this book here is spiritual food to your soul. Not only will it nourish you, but it will it will convict you. It'll encourage you. It will give you everything you need to know about how to live your life as a Christian, but how to live your life as a human being, how God created us. This is your manual. This is your handbook. This should be eaten by you on a daily basis. If you're not reading this word on a daily basis, I encourage you, I implore you, I beg you to find time. Well, I just don't have time. Well, you know, I find that that's an excuse. You can get up earlier. You can spend time with the Lord on your lunch break. This is, we're talking about the creator of the universe. You're telling him that you don't have any time. You're telling him he's not of interest to you. Believe me, my friends, you and I make time for the things that are important to us. It is our decision. It is our choice. Everything that you're doing in your life is a choice that you have made. You don't have to do anything. That's right. You heard it right here. It's my new book coming out. You don't got to do anything. But die, you have to die. You know, they say you, the only thing you'll have to do is pay taxes and die. You don't even have to pay taxes, really. I mean, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. That's not what I'm saying. You should pay your taxes, but you don't have to. You might have some consequences, but you must die. And so that's the only thing that you, uh, you know, that you have to do. So spiritual food, the realities of the judgment day are both sweet and bitter to the Christian. A Christian is to eat God's word as spiritual nourishment. I just talked to you about that. And the Lord has these books, these volumes. This is not the only book that the Lord has. And that's what I found interesting today. He has volumes. He has the book of life. And he has the book, the records, or the docket, if you will, containing the unsaid. So we have two books, really, that we see opened up in the end of time during the judgment in, in, in front of the judgment in front of the magistrate in front of the judge the Lord himself there are two books open up one is from the saved and one is from the unsaved and there are there are there's information in these books there is a law containing the complete history the chronological history of our lives I remember a scene in uh, Bruce Almighty where he's challenging Morgan Freedom, Freeman as God, and the file cabinet opens up and it just continues to open up to everything that he ever said. Well, God has everything written down, word, thought, thought, word, and deed written down in a log. And I call that a docket, really, because it's a legal, you're going to see some legal implications here because we're standing before a judge now, I'm talking about judgment day, and we're standing before the magistrate, the judge. God is the judge. Jesus Christ is going to judge us, actually. And so, uh, and he is God, by the way. So let's not, let's not confuse the issue. Uh, Exodus 32, 33 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of the book of life. That's all of us, my friend. <laughs> we're all blotted out of the book of life. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. We do not, we are not in the book of, we are dying. The wages of sin are, is death. We are dying. Like it or not, my friend, you are dying. Your mom's dying. Your dad's dying. They might be dead. They're your brother, your sister, your, your cat, your dog, your fish. Everything is dying. Your children have to die. 
So whoever is against me, I will blot them out of the book of life. So the entitled the book of the living Moses entitles his this book. Well, the psalmist, excuse me, in Psalm 68, 28, entitles the book of the living. So the book of the living and there's the book of the dead. And there's a second death. That doesn't really mean death. It actually means eternal death, which means that you never die. But you die eternally in the lake of fire. Well, you know, Randy, I don't want to believe in a God that would send people to hell. Again, again, again. I tell you, um, no one's sending anyone to hell. You are making the choice. Right now, you have a choice. Today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make the right, cho the right choice. The choice is yours to make. But I think, it's my strong opinion, the right choice is you can't bear your sins. You can't. You cannot bear those sins and, and spend eternity in hell. That's why I do these... YouTube uh, broadcasts uh, because I don't want to see anybody go to hell. Maybe one person uh, accepts Christ. That would be awesome. And maybe I will see them in heaven and they will tell me, thank you for giving me the word of God. May the words be not my words, but the Lord's words. So, and Daniel, uh, the court was seated and the books were open. So now we're in a courtroom. So we're going to have a judgment. Judgment day is coming. The court's seated. We see judgment happening on the earth. But there's a judgment day. There's a, a day set aside. After all this chaos is done. We'll see how the earth plays out as we go along. We see who's down uh, here on earth. And how the systems are. The, the satanic system of the world. Which is already in place. But Satan's man's going to be here. The Antichrist. We're going to see death, destruction, famine, disease, uh, just, uh, we see it now, but it's going to be amplified. If anything, it's going to be the worst, the tribulation time is the worst time on planet Earth. It's a tribulation time. After that, there's death. The Bible says it is appointed once a man to die and then the judgment. So we have to face the Lord. All of us will face the judge, the magistrate, the king. We will face the king. And the books will be open. The court will be seated. The books are now open. Just like in the court of law that we see on earth. I wanted to make the parallel. The book of life Moses refers to are the righteous ones written in this book. In Philippians 1, 4, 3, you can read that. Luke 10, 20. Names can be removed and blotted out. And I don't think that means when you're saved, you can, but names can be blotted out. I'll blot out their name. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So all of our names are not, uh, in fact, I'm going to go to Luke uh, 10, 20 here. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Bear with me. I'm reading out a New King James Version. People ask me all the time what I'm reading. So there you go. Uh, 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in it that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's the rejoice. 1020. The righteous ones are written in the book of life or the book of heaven. Who are the righteous ones? Well, those are the saved individuals, and we'll see that. You're not righteous because you're good. <laughs> you're righteous and you're clothed righteous because of the Lord Jesus, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he's done on a cross. And your acceptance of that, your repentance, and your conversion, if you will, you must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven. Unless you repent, you too shall perish. The words of Jesus Christ himself. The next book that is opened by the Word of God, Jesus said that we would be judged. The dead are judged, and the dead are judged. No, we, the wages of sin is death. We are dead without Christ. We are spiritually dead. So the, de the dead are judged according to their deeds. I call it a docket of transgressions. Here comes the deeds. Thought, word, and deeds. Everything you did is written down. That's a horrible thought. 
all your secrets that you think you're keeping, they will be exposed. You will be standing there naked, if you will, before the Lord with everything exposed. Revelations 3, 5, Revelation, not Revelations, I don't know why I added the S. 3, 5 says, those who are conquerors will be clothed in white garments. It symbolizes that we are now considered righteous. He's, he's clothing us with his righteousness. And I will never blot out their, his name from the book of life. So praise the Lord that your name will never be blotted out. And those names who are not written in the book are thrown into the lake of fire. That's the second death. And these are, this is scripture. So if your name's not found in that book, Friends, you have to ask yourself, is your name found? Or is your name going to be found in that book? Is your name written in that book? So blot, net, blot out is excelifio, is to wipe out or to erase. Just like on a blackboard, we erase blackboard. And now, but well, we don't use blackboards. Do we in school anymore? <laughs> You're going to erase that blackboard, erase that, erase, delete. For you millennials and you being dead in your trespasses this is colossians 2 13 i want you to hear the scripture and you being dead in your tre you're dead so the, the book the judgment book is for the dead uh we can already see that but the wages of sin is death and yes all die but the judgment the judgment is for everybody yes we'll all stand before the lord but the this judgment now i mean if you're in the book of life you're that those sins have been blotted out. You're in the book of life. If you're not found in the book of life, now the judgment you will have to face for all your thought, words, and deed. Everything that you've done against God's law, you will stand and account for. Every word, every thought, every deed. In your tre in your trespass, let's see, and now you've been dead in your trespass. This is Colossians 2.13. And the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven your trespasses, having wiped out the handwritten requirements, as was against us, which was contrary to us, and has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Praise the Lord, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, what has happened here was a handwritten handwritten. handwritten law here and it, so the word handwrite let's go with that the hand the word handwriting strongs means the document it's a legal note it's a legal bounding it's bound it's a bound it's a legal handwritten note see back in the day in the old fashioned it's an old-fashioned legal term <laughs> because they wrote down a list of charges against you that were being brought up against person and, and to be presented to the magistrate or the judge Today, we say, what are the list of charges? That's where we get that term, where is the list of charges? Well, the, the officer, when there's a list of charges. Elliot's commentary says, but God, for Christ's sake, forgives our trespasses and cancels the bond. It's a bond. It's a binding legal document. This handwritten list of charges against you is a legal document it is more than just things that you've done alone it's a legal document that you have transgressed you have overstepped your bound you have fallen short of the mark you have broken god's laws time and time again i'm sure time and time we all have fallen short of the glory of, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You cannot stand. You will stand before the king. But what I'm saying. When I say you cannot. You do not want to. How about that? You do not want to stand before the king of glory. With these charges against you. And try to. And deal with it on your own. Because he is a just God. He is a loving loving God. Yes. Full of grace. Full of mercy. Yes. He is a just God inside the Ark of the Covenant is the the Ten Commandments on the outside is the mercy seat sprinkled with blood 
you we don't want to open up that book we don't want to open up we don't want to go again you don't want to sit there and say hey i was a good person lord lord that's what people will say lord lord didn't i profess your name didn't we do miracles in your name didn't we go to church didn't we tithe didn't we give didn't we help little old ladies across the street uh did i help my neighbor one time when he was sick i cut his grass i mean none of that none of that will stand up to help you with your case you can plead all you want but the the, the king will say depart from me i never knew you you never knew me you never gave your you never repented you never asked for forgiveness you never entrusted me as your king and surrendered to me you've lived your life the way that you've lived it in fact he says depart from me you who practice sin basically you who practice lawlessness sin is lawlessness you have broken the law and really you're this is a just this is a this is legal and justice just right something has to be done somebody has to pay the price and it's either going to be Christ or it's going to be you it's either going to be you're going to allow Christ to pay the price for your sin today repent and allow him to pay the this mercy all this love that he has it, 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 it bestowed on us by his death blotting out our transgression trans and wiping out the handwritten requirement that was against you. Do not lie. Do not steal. Do you need to know? <laughs> do not blaspheme the Lord's name. Do not commit adultery. Do not, I mean, have no graven image before. We've all broken His commandments. And my friends, the Bible says, if you've broken one, you've broken them all. Is there a severity difference in the consequence of punishment? Yes, there are levels of consequence and severity. That's for another day. I mean. Eliot's commentary again, but God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven our transgressions and cancels the bond. He has wiped out the debt that we had owed. We owed. He paid the price. That's what Christ did. So then maybe that'll make a difference for you when you start to realize what is Christ all about? He's paid your debt. He's came to, to, to save you from your sins. Your sins are leading you to hell. He came to destroy the works of the devil, hell and death and the grave and eternal death. Yes, we're going to die here, but we don't die. You could kill yourself today. You could commit suicide today. You could be so miserable, commit suicide. And you're still living eternally this body you might be out of but you're never out of life eternally see the judge can legally set us free he destroyed the record expunging the debt we owed this debt and he canceled it by nailing it to the cross so here's some scripture for you to think repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that a time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 3.19. Acts, uh, also in Acts, uh, Jesus Christ commands all men to repentance. All men. Okay? I, even I, he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Isaiah 43.25. Jesus says he won't remember your sins as far as the east is from the west. The Bible says he throws our, our sin into the sea of forgetfulness. Forgets them. Forgets them. So who, forgets, who forgets what you've done to me? He does. Jesus Christ does. This second book contains the total record of your sins, acts, thoughts, and deeds. For God to blot out our transgression with the blood shed of his son, we will have to be willing to open up to him. You will have to ask him, invite him into your heart. They're the deepest places of your heart. You'll have to surrender. You must repent. Unless you repent, you too shall perish. God, Jesus is warning you and I. Out of love, you will perish. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must be converted. You, when you're born again, things change for you. You don't want to sin. Do you sin? You will sin. 
and God will convict you, and He will He will sanctify you, meaning He'll, you know, you you will not sin, you will not continue to sin, because you can't, because you have His Holy Spirit inside. That's how you know you you will be so convicted of your sin. If you go back to your sin life, you're going to be miserable. So, we need to open up to Him into the place of our heart, surrender our hearts, our pain, obey Him. Obey Him. Then watch how He heals, restores our life, even to restoration, to eternal life with Him. That's, that's what He wants. That's what He wants. That's what His desire is for you. That's my desire for you too because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me and I love you. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. Jesus doesn't either. He's done all that he could do for you. Will you accept him today? I got to go. God bless you. I love you. More importantly, Jesus Christ loves you to death. I hope to be able to give you the word tomorrow. Lord willing. Take care.